I will say one more thing. Uh, in terms of ground transport, there are a variety of possibilities for ground transport that have already been attempted for application within the state of Texas. This is prior to whatever it was that uh, was uh, done by the legislature beginning in September 2019. Um, part of it also involves uh, the capacity to have private travel available. Um, so you know that I have three budgets right now concerning lost income, and denial of uh, the, the costs associated with refusing to restitute me and or allow for me to be legitimately engaged in some sort of uh, income generation for uh, my own interest, including my own LLC, which uh, has a specific uh, understanding of what could be available in an emergency, including an emergency remediation situation, and would have included a number of actual vehicles that would have had specific kinds of uh, uh, availability in terms of deployment and uh, specific kinds of uses relative to the specific uh, elements of my LLC, um, as well as uh, the equipment necessary for the people I would be working with in order to do what they would be needing, uh, identified primarily as a form of industrial inspection or emergency uh, uh, environmental remediation response. Um, and so with that, those could also be made available if necessary uh, in the course of transporting goods uh, associated with any sort of necessary uh, fortifications or response. And the anticipation is that I would have up to 25 of those available. But I bring this up because in addition to that specific kind of transportation need, the understanding here is that if we're dealing with a situation akin to what I understand we're dealing with, including one that would involve a humanitarian crisis that would need to accommodate a large number of people that might be at a threat of physical violence um, or some other kind of emergency situation, then it's not enough to just characterize it as a crisis and say that because it's a, catastroph a catastrophic situation, uh, that there needs to be the intercession of the state and or potentially some sort of martial law type context that removes people from the process of engaging directly in actual practical work or matters associated with being able to transition their precarious situation into one that's safe for them, including safe in the long term. And safe in the long term means being able to be self-sufficient and get your resource needs met in a way that gives you a context for grounding, including potentially even investing and using that investing, including of your time and your energy and or potentially even an ownership or uh, process toward ownership of an actual asset in the community that can then be involved directly, literally, and democratically in a process of financing for the particular area you're in and then working with people in that area who are already there and already have investments to make sure that that transition is comprehensive and long-term. Then, only after that, and all of this could have already been done, then it comes to a matter of self-protection and community self-protection and availing ourselves of all of our constitutional rights and also understanding uh, the entirety of the situation we're in as well as an appropriate application as necessary of internal controls to assure that there's no exploitation of the situation for opportunistic gain that would attempt to then use violence or some kind of systematology based on coercion to try to compromise the safety of people who have already been exposed to harm and violence and threats of violence and are in a necessary stage where they are uh, preparing themselves to be able to be safe and to maintain that safety.